Good morning, good news. Cold, bitterly cold this morning. Uh, apparently the uh, rodent in Texas that tells us that it's supposed to be six more weeks or six more weeks of spring were wrong, was wrong. So uh, it's unfortunately still winter, isn't it? Darn armadillo, can't tell the weather. Uh, let's jump right into the announcements. And first of all, I'd like to uh, welcome those of you who may be first-time guests with us. Uh, if you are a first-time guest, uh, please make sure you stop by the Welcome Center on your way out. We would love to say hello to you one last time, give you a gift, and hopefully welcome you back uh, to us again sometime. Uh, and if you're joining us uh, for a second, third, or fourth time, welcome back. And we hope to see more of you not only here, but also one of our ministry opportunities. We would love to see, see you be a part of that. Uh, we've got a lot going on in the life of the church. I'm going to jump right into these announcements. First of all, a couple of announcements that are not on the, uh, on the slides. Uh, one is, if you have not uh, yet donated and would still like to donate towards the, uh, uh, the dinner auction that's coming up, please make sure you uh, see, uh, yes, back there, or see Miss um, Hollingsworth, and she will take care of you. Uh, make sure that it gets to the right place. Also, if you have not yet, ladies, signed up for the retreat that's in April, Make sure you uh, check out the sign-up sheets outside and take care of that. All right, so got those out of the way. Is there something special that I need to know about? Okay. Um, <laughs> it is Scout Sunday, yes. Well, I didn't know because she moved up here to the front, so I wasn't sure if there was something I should be making sure that. Fantastic. All right, okay. So uh, today is, uh, is Scout Sunday. And uh, we are pleased to be a part of the scouting uh, family here at Good News. Um, we, have, uh, we have two troops, 158 and 258. We have a pack, 170. And we also sponsor uh, Crew 158. Oh, 171. Yes, thank you. Sorry. Um, and so we are uh, blessed to be a part of that, to offer the opportunity for them to meet and use our facilities. Um, and they give back a lot to us as well, and we are uh, blessed to have them as a part of our family here at Good News. Um, so you may see a, f a few of those folks taking part in the uh, service today, and uh, you can thank them for their uh, service to the church, but also um, just welcome them to our church. Um, also, dinner for eight is coming. If you would like to be a part of this opportunity to be uh, to have some uh, opportunity to learn, get to know other people in the church, and uh, spend some time outside these walls with them. Uh, new groups are forming, so make sure you get signed up. There is a sign-up sheet out in the gathering hall, or talk to Pat Roberts for more information on that. Um, also, this Wednesday is Ash Wednesday. As a part of that, we are offering a uh, Valentine's dinner, pancake supper. If you would like to bring a date um, to that, be right, go right ahead and, and bring them to church and have a wonderful uh, meal, and then uh, following the meal will be our Ash Wednesday service. Um, and uh, that will be in here, and dinner will be over in the Wesley Center. Fantastic. Come join us for that. And then also our new Linton message series is coming, I Am, uh, and that will begin on um, 214, it says. Ash Wednesday. Yes. So this Wednesday. Uh, so come be a part of the Linton message services series that are is happening, and uh, we hopefully will see you then. Um, all right. We're going to open in a word of prayer. I have David. Uh, who is going to come up and uh, from 258, and he is going to be uh, opening us with a word of prayer. Lord, we thank you for this day. Help us to do our best every day, and forgive us when we slip. Teach us to be kind to other people, and to help them at all times. Bless our parents and teachers and leaders, and all the members of scouting. Bless us, Lord, in your love for us. Help us to be a better scouts, and let us do our best for you. Amen. Amen. All right, at this time is children's time with Lisa. The children can come on down front. After children's time, they can go to children's church for a word about Jesus at their level, and they'll return to us just after the sermon. have an offering we'll have this bowl here every Sunday thank you 
and it all goes to the Children's Advocacy Center, thank you, which helps kids and their families. It was so good to see so many of you in Sunday School today, and I'm so glad to see you all here too. It's Invite a Friend Month, and it's good to see some new faces and some new kids here at church, and some of our old ones too. So thank you so much for being here. We have something in the bag. This is a picture cube, and it has a lot of pictures from when my family went on a special vacation. And we don't go here every summer, but a lot of summers we go to Colorado. Have any of you ever been to Colorado? Not me. I haven't. I you haven't, haven't yet? Anywhere. Oh, I highly recommend it. Do you see the mountains? Yeah. Do you see the mountains, Hannah? And there are some animals. There are lots of animals in the mountains. So these are elk, and look at this furry little friend. Do you see him? You have to look pretty closely. That is called a marmot. And one day when we were having a picnic lunch, he came right up to me and stole my sandwich. <laughs> and I snapped a picture of him. Isn't he cute? Like, how? I didn't see him. Look, you see him right there? Oh. Why did he steal your sandwich? He was hungry. Um, I let him have it. I let him have my sandwich. So, why do you think people like to go to the mountains, especially in the summer, but all year long? Why? They do like to go. Why do you think they like to go? Do you think it's pretty as we look at this? Oh, my little thing's coming apart. There we go. Is it beautiful? They like to have family time? I like that. And do you see the snow? It is cold. So you know how hot it gets in the summer? It's, it's really nice to, to go where it's cooler. And it's beautiful and peaceful. So a lot of times in life, when you're kids and when you're grown-ups, it can get kind of busy and stressful. And it's nice to just get away from it all, where it's beautiful and peaceful. Well, in our Bible story, Jesus went to the mountain, and he took three people with him. He took Peter and James and John. They climbed up the mountain, and when they were there, something amazing happened. Jesus' appearance changed, and his clothes became dazzling white. And then they saw Elijah and Moses with Jesus, and it was this amazing experience. And instead of staying at the top of the mountain, they stayed there a little while, but then it was time to come back down. And it's the same way whenever my family goes to the mountain, we go there, it's beautiful, it's peaceful, we get away from some of the heat and the stress. But it also gives us strength, so when we come back, we can deal with all of our busy stuff and our stressful stuff. So let's say a prayer together. Dear God, Dear God thank you for our wonderful times on the mountaintop that help us renew our strength for our daily walk with you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you all so much for listening. You can go to Children's Church and we're having our Valentine party. Good morning, church. It's this time in our worship service where we share sightings. That's what Miss Roxanne and I were talking about that had the curiosity of Mr. Harmon. 
Uh, but it's during this time in worship every week where we invite someone to either come up here and share or pass along a message to myself or Pastor Chris, and we'll share it for you. Uh, but those times uh, as we go about our daily lives, where we, uh, we have God sightings. We, we have times and places where we see God's activity and God's presence in the world. Sometimes we see that, sometimes we hear that, sometimes we smell that. But what we are hopefully being encouraged to do more and more often is see where God is present in our everyday lives. Because I assure you, God is present with us no matter where we are every day of our life. And this morning, I'm going to invite Rock Man, who's going to come up and uh, share for just a moment. Thank you, Ms. Roxanne. And if you have an encounter with God that you would like to share, we encourage you to, again, share that with myself and Pastor Chris. You can email us at godsightings at goodnewsumc.org, and then we'll get that. And there's a picture that goes along with it. That'd be awesome. We can share that picture on the screen. And then if you'd like to uh, share, you can do that, uh, or one of us can do that as well. Uh, we move from our God sightings to our time of prayer, and as Miss Allison walks out with McKinley, isn't it a joy that we have children in our worship service that can cry and be who they are as children? Amen? Uh, it is certainly a joy that we have uh, look out in the room and to see so many scouts out there. Uh, just do me a favor, if you would, as we start sharing our joys. If you are a scout today, adult or youth, or if you've ever been a scout in your life, please stand up. Thank you all. You can be seated. 
And as Mr. Harmon already said, uh, you know, yes, we're the charter organization rep for, you know, Troop 158 and Troop 258 and Crew 158 and PAC 171, but uh, I assure you, we are blessed by our scouts in this church. So uh, on behalf of Good News and all of us here, thank you, uh, all your scouts. You do a wonderful job uh, out in the community, uh, helping to change lives and, and uh, do lots of wonderful things. Uh, I have another joy I want to share this morning. Uh, and it's not that the church was 16 years old yesterday, but from the very beginning of our worship services, Lavinda Elmer has been doing the audio-visual stuff up there, and she's been asking desperately for somebody to come help her for a while. And it's a joy to see Lavinda sitting down there and smiling because Lucas Horton is up there in the AV booth running this stuff today. So that is a... I promise you a couple of great joys. Uh, I do want to share some concerns, and uh, some of you may already be aware of these. Some are new, some are, uh, some are ongoing, but uh, I want to lift up Terry Rendon's father, James Stout, who is not doing very well, so, so prayers for uh, Mr. Stout and for, for the entire uh, family of yours. Where's Terry? Right there. You're hiding in the front, but prayers for, for, your, uh, for your father-in-law and all that's going on there. Uh, I do want to lift up, uh, we've been praying for uh, Sherry Swantner and Cindy Hart. Uh, the transplant date is getting closer and closer. It is March 2nd. Cindy will be donating one of her kidneys to Sherry, and that process begins uh, again in less than a month. So prayers for them and for their families and for the medical team uh, that is uh, helping in this event. Uh, the final thing I just want to lift up is a prayer concern, and I don't know much about it, but I heard it on uh, the way to church this morning that there was a... Uh, uh, a uh, a plane that crashed somewhere near Moscow with about 71 people on this morning, and certainly, uh, you know, many deaths and many families are affected, so we want to uh, reach out to, to those all the way across the world and, and pray that God's presence would be in the midst of their tragedy this morning. Uh, in just a minute, I'm going to ask us to go into a time of uh, prayer. You'll hear Lewis playing in the background, and uh, I'll, I'll start us off with a prayer, then I'm going to give you an opportunity to speak aloud uh, your joys or your concerns. I think it's important that we, we share our concerns not only with God but with one another so we can help uh, share one another's burdens, so we can share one another's joys. And then we'll close out our prayer time together with the Lord's Prayer, which will be on the screen. But let us now go to uh, God in prayer. Almighty and gracious God, Lord, we come together today to, to sing praises to you, to, to share with you how much we adore you, how much we love you, how much we trust you, how appreciative we are of you in our lives. Lord, we, we're just at times speechless for how you pour your love into our lives and the difference that makes in our lives. And Lord, even as you love us each and every day, we confess that sometimes we don't get it right. Sometimes we stray and wander. Sometimes we forget. Sometimes, Lord, we commit sins. And sometimes Lord, we sin because we don't do something we should do. But Lord, even when those things are happening in our lives, Lord, your love remains constant. Your love remains steadfast. And Lord, for that, we are so, so very thankful. We're thankful, Lord, that there is no place on this earth where we can go where your loving presence is not there. Calling us, beckoning us to draw closer to you, to love you with our entire heart, soul, mind, and strength. Lord, we love you. And even, Lord, as we come before you today to sing praises to you and tell you how much we love you and how much we appreciate your presence in our lives, Lord, there are those in this room who are struggling. There are those of our family members or our friends or our co-workers, Lord, who are struggling. Struggling and in need of healing, whether that be physically or emotionally or spiritually. And so, Lord, we call upon your healing presence in those areas where it's needed. There are some, Lord, who are struggling to know what to do next, a decision that's in front of them that, Lord, we pray your divine wisdom would help them to discern what is the right thing to do.
Lord, there are some that just feel lost and alone. Who are in need, Lord, of somehow realizing that they are not alone. That you are always there. Lord, you know our needs. You know our concerns because, Lord, you are our creator, our redeemer, and our sustainer. But, Lord, we take this time. We take this time now to lift aloud both of those joys that we are experiencing in our lives as well as those concerns. And so, Lord, as we speak them aloud, we pray that you would hear our prayers. Almighty God, even as we pause to pray and lift aloud to you both the joys that we have in our hearts as well as those concerns, we pray, Lord, that not only would you show your presence in those situations where needed, but Lord, that you would use us, that you would empower us, that you would equip us, that you would embolden us to share the light of Christ with those who are in need. Lord, we know that we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. And Lord, as a people of faith who, who have gathered here today, we now join our voices as we pray the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespassed against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And just one thing I did not mention a moment ago. If you have a prayer concern that you would like to share with this church that you'd like us to be praying for, that you'd like to go out on the church-wide email that goes out every Wednesday, in your uh, bulletins there's a little tear-off sheet. And you can fill in your prayer request and you can put it in the offering plate uh, during that time later in the worship service. If that is uh, a prayer concern that you want shared with the congregation, we will do that. If it's one that you would rather remain private with myself or myself and the prayer team, we will do that as well. But we invite you to share those concerns uh, with us if you desire. And now uh, I'm going to invite uh, Mr. Duncan Harmon up who is going to uh, jump in and share this morning's scripture with you which comes from the Gospel of Mark, the ninth chapter, verses 2 through 9. Six days later, Jesus took Peter, James, and John and brought them to the top of a very high mountain where they were alone. He was transformed in front of them and his clothes were amazingly bright brighter than if they had been bleached white. Elijah and Moses appeared and were talking with Jesus. Peter, re Peter reacted to all of this by saying to Jesus, Rabbi, it's good that we are here. Let's make three shrines, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. He said this because he didn't know how to respond, for the three of them were terrified. Then a cloud overshadowed them, and a voice spoke from the cloud. This is my son, whom I love dearly. Listen to him. Suddenly, looking around, they no longer saw anyone with them except Jesus. As they were coming down the mountain, he ordered them not to tell anyone what they had seen until after the human one had risen from the dead. Thank you. You know, we, we don't often do uh, this in church anymore, at least at, at Good News, but as Duncan has read the scripture, uh, what you hear said in many churches, this is the word of God, and we say, thanks be to God. Amen. Indeed, thanks. Uh, I want to share uh, this morning with you as we begin this message 
uh, memories I, of I have of a movie that I watched something probably 20 years ago. Uh, sometime in the 1990s, there was a mo movie called The Englishman Who Went Up a Hill and Came Down a Mountain. And as the story takes place, it takes place in a small village in Wales in the early 1900s. And a couple of English map makers come to this community in Wales, and they come to this village so they can measure this so-called mountain that's just outside of town. And a part of the cartographer's job was to ensure that, indeed, what you put on the map as a mountain was a mountain and not a hill. And so these cartographers come into town, they talk with the villagers, they go up to the top of the mountain, and they measure this mountain, and it falls shy of the criteria of being a thousand feet tall in order to be considered a mountain. Now, the townspeople were kind of hurt by this. They thought it was a slam against them, and it kind of hurt their village pride. So, at this point, there began a number of shenanigans to kind of delay the map makers in their process and delay them from leaving the village. And while this delay was going on, this gave time for many of the folks in this village to go all the way up this large hill and dump loads of rocks and dirt on top of this mountain. Yeah, you know where this is going. And so before the cartographers were to leave, they said, won't you go measure it one more time? Because we know it's a mountain. And so indeed, the cartographers went up there and they measured the mountain again. And indeed, it fit the criteria of being above 1,000 feet. So civic pride was restored to the Welsh village and the Englishman who went up the hill came down a mountain. Now the reason I'm sharing this story with you this morning is because the scripture you heard Duncan read just a few moments ago is about going up and down a mountain. Like Moses who went up on the mountain to, to enter into God's glorious presence and to receive the Ten Commandments, Jesus also went up a mountain. He went up that mountain with Peter, James, and John, and, and when they went up there, those three disciples saw this transfiguration of Jesus. A change in Jesus' face, a change in Jesus' clothing. Or his whole body illuminated in this glorious white. And the, the disciples, as they were watching this, they saw this wonderful connection between Jesus and the ancient leaders, Moses and Elijah. And after being surrounded by a pretty frightening cloud, they, they heard a voice the disciples did. A voice that said Jesus was God's Son, the Chosen One. And what Jesus and His three disciples experienced up there on that mountain was an amazing, phenomenal, awesome experience. It was a time, a, a time of coming into contact with God's glorious presence. We read that account. As we heard Miss Lisa talking about mountaintop experiences, you know it had to be a wonderful mountaintop experience. But no matter how wonderful it was up there on the mountain, Jesus and his disciples did not stay up there for a very long time. It sounds like their camp out up on the mountain was only like one night because they came down the very next day. And when they did, they at the base of the mountain, soon discovered that there were problems. Their mountaintop experience, basking in the presence of God's glory, was short-lived because when they got down to the bottom, it was there that a boy, a young boy, who was suffering terribly, and a father at his wit's end, that's the encounter they had as soon as they came down the mountain. The boy was being thrown to the ground because of an evil spirit. Now some would say maybe this was, since this was a long time before we had the medical science that we do today, maybe that was not an evil spirit, maybe it was epilepsy. epilepsy. But whether it was epilepsy or whether it was an evil spirit, it was wreaking havoc on this young boy and the young boy's family. Fortunately, Jesus had just come down from the mountaintop experience and he had this renewed power of this transfiguration and affirmation by God. So Jesus quickly rebuked the evil spirit. He healed the boy and gave him back to his father. It's probably safe to say that the holy power that was up came down so that the one who was down could be 
raised up. The story seems like a great one for today. After all, our scouts, and there were so many of you standing up, but our scouts go camping all the time. And I know that's something our scouts look forward to because it's a wonderful activity. You get to be out in nature. You get to enjoy the fresh air. You get to enjoy the trees, the dirt, the bugs, the stars, and the beautiful views. You learn how to set up a tent, how to, how to build a fire, how to cook food and be responsible and safe. You gain confidence in your abilities that God has given you. You feel the thrill of mountaintop experiences when you're on these kind of campouts. Maybe you get that Colorado Rocky Mountain High that John Denver used to sing about. Is it possible that that mountaintop experience like Jesus experienced, the mountaintop experience like those disciples experienced, where they came in contact with a loving and merciful and gracious God and they basked in His presence, is that not what sometimes we can feel when we come and worship with one another? Can't, can't our worship together provide some of those same kind of mountaintop benefits? While at church we sing praises to God as the creator of all nature. As a faithful people who gather, a people who are beloved by God, we, we don't believe that God is a distant God that created the earth and then went away. No, we believe that, that God is continuously and intimately involved in, in creation and recreating. Our spirits are lifted up by God who has used diverse and complex geological methods to raise up mountains and, and carve out valleys, who has created amazing plant and animal species that, that thrive in changing environments. Because we love and praise and give honor to a, a heavenly God who isn't afraid to get down and dirty in the processes of life, we gain in our own skills in our own confidence for solving problems and making the world a better place. You heard that prayer that David offered up, that opening prayer this morning that spoke about that. We go up to the spiritual mountain in our worship services, I pray. Or there's Bible classes, or there's religious retreats, or there's other encounters, and there's, of course, the Boy Scout campouts I've mentioned. Places we can gain higher insight of who God is and who we are in God's presence and what God wants from us. Then we feel empowered by God's presence with us. We feel empowered by our experience. We're better able to adapt our lives to becoming more healthy people, making better choices, having kinder attitudes, and behaving in more positive ways. But you know, down at the bottom of the mountain... Every one of us, every one of us in this room struggles with hard things. Maybe we face feelings of jealousy or, or anger. Maybe we feel overwhelmed by somebody's expectations of what we're to do or who we're to be. Maybe we're confused because our brains don't work as well as we wish they would. Or we embarrass ourselves or are afraid we'll embarrass ourselves because we don't know the right words to say or the right things to do in our relationships. Sometimes we're tempted to do things that we know are not right. But we have trouble seeking a better option. Sometimes we react before we think. Sometimes we feel like we can't live without certain habits and we don't understand why bad stuff keeps happening to us and why it won't God, give us a break. Do those things happen to y'all or is it just me? Sometimes things happen at the bottom of the mountain. And that's why it's important for us to go up on the mountain, to have those mountaintops experiences with God. We need to experience the holy so we can gain skills and, and wisdom and confidence to be better human beings so when we come back down, we can deal with those situations. You know, there are many others who have fallen down and need a helping hand. We who, who have been to the mountaintop, who have experienced God's glorious presence, who 
who have been inspired and who have been strengthened by God's presence in our life, need to do something in our world to make it a better place for those who are in need of care, who are in need of seeing God's loving, transformative presence. You know, we are called. We are called communally, but we are also called individually to, to do this one-on-one -on -one thing like the proverbial Boy Scout helping a little old lady cross the street. Like the wilderness explorer Russell in the movie Up. We're called to find other persons who need some kind of help and to give it to them because it makes their life better and it also improves our lives. You know, our spiritual highs aren't meant only for one-on-one -on -one improvements. Talking about this mountaintop preparation for calling in the world makes me think of Martin Luther King Jr.'s famous I've been to the mountaintop speech. It's the one he gave the day before he was assassinated. Martin Luther King Jr. had gone to Tennessee to support African-American sanitation workers who were on strike. King and other civil rights activists were applying their spiritual faith to the down and low dirty problems of workers picking up trash and the fact that they weren't being compensated for what they were doing. You might say that King was bringing in the holiness and power of God down from the mountain into the city streets where people needed to be treated fairly so they could house and clothe and feed their families. King was trying to encourage his, his brothers and sisters in faith to recognize that God's transfiguring light is not just about the face of Jesus. Not, it's not just for the religious leaders. It's not just for the disciples like Peter, James, and John. That it's for you and for me as well. God's glorious presence, that relationship that, that God beckons to us is for each and every one of us in this room. It's for each and every one outside of this room. God's glorious presence is one that God wants to shine into everybody's life. The transfiguring and transformative experience that happens on the mountaintop is to be taken down into places where we collectively face big problems and adaptive challenges to our society. The value of our mountaintop experiences is to help us evolve in our societal thinking and realize that, that there might be a, a more better, a more compassionate, a less discriminatory, more healing way of us living together in this world we live in. And whether we are up on the mountain at a Boy Scout camp out feeling spiritual, or we're in a worship service and we're singing praises to God and feeling connected to God, or we're at some religious retreat or just out in nature by ourselves. Our God sightings, our, our time when we are in the presence of the Most Holy, are times that are to be transfiguring in our lives. So that we might be empowered, equipped, and emboldened to transform the world. The spiritual connection that we have with God is given to us so that the, the prayer that we pray each and every week, the prayer that we prayed a little while ago would come to fruition. So that God's kingdom might come down on this earth just as it is in heaven. This week I read a story about a little boy who was out in his front yard and he was throwing the ball up into the air. A passerby came and asked the little boy, What are you doing? He said, I'm playing catch with God. I toss it up to God and God tosses it back down to me. You know, the thrill of a mountaintop high is a wonderful thing. But we know what goes up must come down. When we go up, it witnessed the awe and majesty of nature and God, God's intent is that it would change us personally. It would transform us and renew us, creating us in better ways to be able to think and behave in our everyday lives. I believe that God also hopes that our mountaintop experiences will expand our desire to, to help and to serve others in these one-on-one -on -one relationships in our societies at large. Hi, Hannah. It's okay. <laughs> Let me close with this. Indeed, mountaintop 
experiences are great things. But the test of them is when we come back to the real world. To a world where there is offering, awfully, a lot of times, an inability to see God's glorious presence in our midst. God seems sometimes hidden right in front of us. And so the test for us is whether we remember and trust what we've discovered and whether we will share that encounter with others. It's my hope, it is my prayer that we as individuals and we as a community of faith will do just that. Sharing God's love with others no matter where we might find ourselves. Amen? Amen. As we continue in our worship service, we come now to the time when we share our tithes and offerings. Uh, I know we have a lot of guests in our worship service today, and so if you, if you see a lot of change in the offering plates, it's making noise as it comes by, that's a good thing because all the change in our offering plates goes towards missions. So we invite, invite you to put all your loose change in uh, the, our offering plates. And also, if you're new to Good News, we have a variety of ways you can give. You can give online, give via your smartphone, in the mail, uh, or in worship on Sunday. But as our ushers prepare to come forward and receive this morning's offering, uh, and as the praise team comes forward to the stage, I invite us to bow our heads for a prayer. Almighty and gracious God, Lord, we are so very thankful for the many, many ways you pour blessings and abundance into our lives. We are thankful, Lord, that you bless us. Bless us so many ways, sometimes ways in which we don't even comprehend. And so, Lord, as a people of faith who love you, we take this time to give back to you a portion of that which you blessed us with. We pray, Lord, that these, that these gifts would be both used near and far to people we know and to people we will never know so that your kingdom on this earth might indeed come as it is in heaven. Lord, we pray that you would bless the giver, that you would bless the gift, but most importantly, Lord, we pray that you would bless those who are recipients of these gifts. We ask all these things in the mighty and powerful name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. And all those who agree say, Amen. Amen.
its grip on me. Amen. God is good? All the time? Uh, before we have our closing blessing and stand and sing a reprise of our closing song, I just want to uh, let you know if you're a first-time guest, we'd love to see you in the gathering hall on your way out just to tell you that we're so glad that you're here and to give you a small gift to take home with you. Uh, as you heard Mr. Harmon mention at the beginning of our worship service, uh, if, if you uh, have not already purchased your tickets uh, for the dinner auction, which is on Saturday, March 3rd, Miss Lisa Walters will be in the gathering hall over here, and she can, uh, she can take payment for those tickets. Also, Elizabeth Hollingsworth. Where'd you go? Elizabeth Hollingsworth, if you uh, had a gift that you were wanting to donate or talk to her about that, you can see her. She'll be out in the gathering hall as well. I want to say thanks to our scouts. Indeed, you bless us, scouts. And I just want to say thank you and glad that you were here and thank you for participating in worship today. And uh, remember, next Wednesday begins the seasoning of Lent. It's Ash Wednesday. We have a service in here at 7 o'clock, and we'd love to share some, some pancakes and sausage with you beginning at 6 o'clock over in the Wesley Center. Uh, I invite you to stand if you're able. And as we've been doing the last several weeks and we'll continue doing, I want to uh, lift up what our mission and vision statement is. I invite you to repeat that with me. Our mission is making new disciples of Jesus Christ for the transformation of the world. And our vision is cultivating new relationships grounded in God's love. Would you bow your heads as we pray? Almighty and gracious God, Lord, again, we give you thanks and praise for this day and, Lord, for your glorious presence in each of our lives. As we prepare to leave and go out into the world, Lord, may we be filled with your loving presence and may we share that presence with all who those we encounter. We ask these things in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen.